Well, only kind of. Uh, it uh, is uh, generally not possible to retain credit for the computer science minor for both this and future computer science courses. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, this may end up becoming ele an elective for you as compared okay. to part of the computer science minor. Yeah. Okay. But that's the only ramification. Okay, so I, 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 it's basically an elective currently right now because I'm yeah. a psychology major. Oh, well, excellent. So, that was my yeah. integrated major. Yes, yeah, so basically this is okay for me to this class. It is, absolutely. Um, yeah. Now, because you're on the wait list, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, do make sure that you've been turning in homeworks and attending classes. Yeah, that's what I was going to talk to you about. Since I did during the beginning of this week, I think my friend was just talking about homework, and I'm like, I, I can't access anything, so I don't know anything about homework. So, um, I think you gave them a, you gave them homework. Like, I'm not sure. Yes, there was there's homework due uh, in uh, four minutes, uh, and I'm afraid you are going to lose the grades on that homework. Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, there are no uh, homeworks late. Uh, the homeworks accepted, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it uh, is uh, generally posted uh, on uh, the uh, Slack channel uh, and in our uh, slides. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I don't uh, have access to uh, You must send me an email to be added to the Slack channel. Uh, this was announced last class. Okay, so um, since I'm on like the sixth piece on the latest, so I will have to send my email. Yes, I have uh, uh, told the uh, computer science advisor uh, that I will admit students in from the wait list who uh, have been attending class and turning in homeworks preferentially. And uh, uh, so uh, as the sixth person on the personal list, I suspect that you will uh, still make it in the class regardless. Uh, but uh, um, people who have been attending since the first class on the wait list and turning in the homeworks uh, on time will get priority. Oh, just the one, the weekly homework. Just, yeah, just the one. Just the one. They're weekly homeworks, yeah. And so. is it okay if I ask what it is? Yeah, yeah, it's five percent of the month. Uh, each of the uh, homework for five percent. Yes, I'm afraid you have. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. To get started here in just a moment. Uh, how do people find uh, this week's homework and getting the uh, RAM and uh, stuff uh, for your computer and getting the video recorded? Anybody have any particular problems you want to uh, play? We've got a lot of good uh, submissions. Everybody's kind of seemed to uh, get the uh, concept of uh, DNS servers and IP addresses and HTTP requests. Uh, I was really pleased with how you guys described all that. Uh, um, generally, if uh, people are handing in a uh, homework uh, two or three days before, I'm usually pretty on the ball and I'll look at it right then and tell you your grade and stuff. Uh, uh, the day of class is usually a pretty busy one for me, not just with getting ready for class, but also a couple other meetings on Wednesday. Uh, so if you send me a homework on Wednesday, you probably won't hear for a couple of days uh, on the thing. Uh, but uh, those that got in early looked great, and so I trust that all the ones that got in today uh, look, uh, look equally good. We're going to have a class today uh, that is uh, kind of broken up into various pieces. Uh, there are a bunch of topics to uh, get ready for uh, some of the programming pieces of this course uh, that uh, are uh, just kind of a hodgepodge of things. And uh, so last class, uh, we uh, started out uh, with uh, the command line pieces that we didn't have time for at the end of class. And so that's where I'm going to start today uh, is with the discussion of the command line uh, and the pieces of the uh, assignment that we kind of dropped from this last week's homework. So if you recall, uh, I initially in the homework on the slide said that uh, you were to, from a command window, uh, run the, uh, the, the terminal command to show your RAM and show your disk space and to pipe that into a text file. Uh, and I got a lot of questions of people uh, with uh, a, a very blank stares going, what do you mean? We didn't cover this, which of course is the case. And so the first thing we're going to do today is talk about what a terminal window is uh, and uh, what text files are and kind of some of the basic things that, uh, yeah, that could have led you to do that part of the homework. Oops. Assuming my slides advance. There we go. Uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript is the uh, programming language that we'll mostly be using in this class. Uh, a bunch of different programming languages. I'm going to talk about programming language in general just a little bit uh, in uh, this regard. Uh, but uh, JavaScript is the one where the, uh, the main focus will, uh, it will be. 
to write any programming language, uh, you need to use a text editor. Now, it can be an online text editor, uh, or it can be uh, on your computer text editor, a bunch of different ways of editing text. Uh, but I got some questions this last week on the uh, homework about uh, uh, is a text editor, a text file, a uh, Microsoft Word document, uh, or uh, can this be in any uh, uh, format? Uh, and a text file is a very specific format that is just text. Uh, in Microsoft Word, you can do a lot of neat things. Uh, you can put uh, you, you margins in, you can format, you can put tables in, uh, uh, change different fonts. Uh, a text writer editor gets rid of all of this and just leaves the text that is, uh, is there. Uh, I actually find this useful for uh, for writing as well, not to worry about uh, that stuff when I'm initially writing. And so there's some text editors that uh, I find much easier to uh, author, uh, you know, papers and stuff in, and then move them to Word when I just want to uh, do the formatting. It means I don't have to worry about that stuff as I'm uh, as I'm authoring. Uh, but particularly for code, you never, ever, ever want to write code in uh, Microsoft Word. Uh, I, it just is not an appropriate text editor to uh, use for uh, for writing code. We're going to, in this class, talk about Visual Studio Code, uh, which is a free code editor from uh, Microsoft that I, uh, I think have a lot of nice features to it. Uh, there are a bunch of other code editors you can use, though, uh, and if you're already familiar with a different text editor for uh, writing code, uh, by all means, use that one, or uh, just let me know what it is so I'm uh, able to uh, help if you get stuck on something. Um, and then finally today, we're going to talk about source code control. Uh, this is the uh, GitHub uh, stuff that I was talking about last week. Uh, and uh, basically, everything you turn in in this class will be inside source code control. Uh, and uh, so this is the first week that we'll introduce how to set up a uh, project in GitHub, uh, how to uh, check things into it, how to uh, actually use source code control. And then finally, I'm going to uh, scare you all by talking about project one. Uh, and I'm introducing this way before we've talked about a lot of the things that will let you uh, successfully complete this. Uh, the reason I'm doing it, though, is a reminder that next week, uh, I'm not here in class. I've got a couple of uh, yeah, web developers from uh, yeah, here in Victoria that are going to come in and uh, uh, do an intro to uh, uh, JavaScript and web development. Uh, and the reason I'm introducing the project one right now and putting so many things that I haven't uh, talked about yet is that uh, I expect you to hit them up in my absence and say, hey, how do I do project one? And uh, uh, yeah, they'll probably give you lots of help that I probably wouldn't have done standing right here. So I suspect that after next week, uh, you'll uh, be in a much, much better position to actually do the pieces that are talked about here in project one. Uh, and if you aren't, uh, can certainly hop on the Slack channel and get some uh, help on, uh, on doing that. Uh, uh, it's going to be the uh, probably uh, most uh, significant individual programming assignment of the uh, course. After this project one, uh, as I mentioned last week, we'll, uh, we'll split out into group assignments. And so we'll uh, be able to have your, uh, your other folks in the class uh, in your group help you a lot with those programming assignments. Uh, talk about that more at the end, though, uh, and uh, let's just uh, jump into the things uh, about uh, GitHub and Git Bash. Uh, let me actually, before I do that, ask for a show of hands. Uh, the uh, getting ready for last week was uh, to install Git Bash on your computer. Uh, uh, who has got Git Bash on their laptop? Uh, about half of y'all. Uh, uh, of those that do not, do you uh, not because you ran into problems with the instructions or because you just didn't get to it? Nobody has specific problems you want me to try and resolve on that. Okay, you are going to be horribly lost in trying to do the exercises for today's class if you have not got GitHub on your computer. Uh, so I'd advise while I'm talking to uh, either install GitHub on your laptop uh, or to uh, uh, log into uh, one of the lab machines in front of you. Uh, uh, the first time you log into the lab machine, it usually takes a few minutes. Uh, so uh, I, I, I do that a bit early. Yeah, but uh, ideally, install GitHub uh, on your uh, or, uh, Git for Windows on your uh, uh, yeah, the machine itself. Um, so the main thing in uh, this uh, Git for Windows is the Git Bash terminal. And I talked to, I'm going to leave it on this screen while I talk rather than going to my next one for a second because I see people writing down the uh, URL there to install uh, Git for Windows. Um, I, I talked last week uh, just a little bit about command windows uh, and uh, mentioned that uh, the uh, PC command window uh, that you access by uh, typing CMD uh, on the start menu uh, is a different command window uh, than is the terminal window on Mac uh, yeah, that you access by starting term from the, yeah, the finder. Uh, what git bash is, is a command window uh, that is much more similar to Unix command windows. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, Linux is uh, what you might run on your uh, laptop at some point if you want a local version of Unix, but uh, on server machines that, uh, for instance, run the, uh, yeah, the web servers that you use later in this course, uh, uh, Unix of uh, some variant is uh, almost uh, invariably the uh, command uh, yeah, language of the operating system that uh, is running on those. Uh, and Unix terminals uh, have a uh, variety of different flavors, but a bash shell uh, is one of the more popular flavors. Uh, 
Uh, what a bash shell allows you to do, uh, aside from having a common shell on both Mac and uh, Windows, uh, is to have essentially a programming language for using the command window. Uh, and we won't go very deep into bash commands, uh, but uh, we'll just kind of scratch the surface on uh, how to use some of those uh, commands and get, uh, yeah, get used to them. Am I okay advancing to the next slides? Everybody have written down uh, the uh, link for the uh, get uh, scm.com slash downloads? Yeah, cool. Um, so a reminder of uh, this picture from uh, last week uh, of the uh, yeah, software components of a computer. Okay? Because this is important in understanding why we're using the command window so much in this, uh, yeah, this course. Uh, right at the top, uh, we have the applications like word browsers and other GUI applications. Uh, these are things that are drawing on the screen uh, and uh, uh, you're interacting with your mouse by clicking on things and opening up windows and stuff. Uh, and there's a whole lot of things underneath those uh, GUI or graphical user interface applications uh, that as a computer user, you don't necessarily see all the time. Uh, the thing that's making these uh, GUI applications work is a window manager. Uh, this is something that uh, kind of negotiates between the different uh, applications. Uh, and if you press Alt-Tab uh, when you're in your word processor and it bounces over to uh, your uh, web browser, uh, this is the window manager that's taking that Alt-Tab message and knowing, oh, okay, it's, another, it's the other window that uh, this person wants up. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, common commands between windows that the window manager uh, takes care of. At the same level of the window manager uh, is the terminal. Uh, and the terminal and base operating system utilities, uh, that means basically have more privileged access to the computer uh, than do the uh, individual application windows, and certainly than do uh, the programs inside of a web browser. So for instance, if uh, in your web browser, uh, you're uh, going to uh, try and access the files on a uh, local computer, you won't be able to do that in general, but because that web browser is what's called sandboxed or is prohibited from accessing the uh, local computer files. Uh, and this is uh, primarily a safety measure that if you browse to a uh, website out there, you don't want it accessing the files in your hard drive uh, uh, because it might be uh, trying to do something nefarious with your, uh, uh, your files. And so the sandbox is really for your protection as a user. Uh, uh, applications on top of the uh, window manager uh, have uh, some level of sandboxing as well, but it isn't down to the file level. Uh, they can't access the files. Without administrative privileges, uh, they generally can't, though, uh, access device drivers and can't uh, uh, do some other things on your uh, computer. Uh, your terminal window, uh, if you open it with privileges access, can do all of this and actually is where you access all of the low-level utilities to work with your computer. And it's not that we're going to be using these low-level utilities as much in this course, uh, but by virtue of using the uh, command window to interact with uh, all the things we're trying to do, uh, you'll gain a better understanding of what component pieces make your computer work and how to interact with them at this lower level. So it's really the lowest level of, uh, a, 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 that's normally accessed on the computer. There are lower levels. Uh, and uh, if you take an operating systems course at some point in the future, you'll talk about all the different security rings in a, 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 a computer and how they uh, keep the operations separate from each other so that one application can't interfere with another application. Uh, but from the perspective of a, a user of the operating system, this is really the lowest level that you'll, uh, you'll access things at. Uh, and in many ways, I find it simpler than using a, a graphical user interface. Uh, uh, it's not as discoverable, meaning I can't just poke around uh, and uh, find uh, out what to do. Uh, but once you have a, a list of commands, those commands are very precisely defined, and you can do things very uh, exactly uh, using those commands. Whereas with a GUI, it's always just a little bit of a mystery uh, how uh, 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 this drop-down menu might uh, uh, interrelate uh, with this uh, 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 command window on this box and this text box. If you check this te uh, uh, check, that drop-down menu goes away. Uh, it's always a bit of a mystery. Uh, now, it's discoverable because you can click around and discover things by looking, uh, 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 but it's not very predictable. At the command line level, things are very, very predictable uh, because you're dealing with individual commands that are generally uh, distinct from any other command that might be on the system. This, uh, by the way, uh, uh, tension between uh, discoverability and preciseness of uh, uh, operation uh, is one that exists all over the place uh, in uh, computer science. Uh, uh, and discoverability uh, is often what's given the uh, a higher uh, value for usability of systems. Uh, but in terms of an expert user of a system, uh, it's really precision that wins. Uh, in that uh, once you know what the commands are and you're uh, just kind of doing them day in, day out as you're uh, working on things, it's that efficiency of input that really can 
predominates over the uh, discoverability. So expert user versus uh, novice user uh, is one of the tensions that as you start in some of the later projects, particularly projects two and three in this uh, course, to uh, think about designing uh, interfaces for your users. I'll want you to keep that in mind. Uh, are you optimizing for the initial user, uh, initial use of the system, or are you optimizing for somebody that's using the system every day, day in and day out? It's one of the fundamental usability tensions. So one of the things before we actually jump into uh, talking about the uh, command window uh, that's absolutely essential to, uh, uh, to understand about uh, your uh, computer is just kind of some of the organizational concepts of it. Uh, when you're uh, using a word processor, uh, all of you undoubtedly at some point uh, have uh, said save and had to come to this decision of oh, where do I save this. Uh, and uh, oftentimes, uh, the uh, operating system, particularly Macs, uh, Macs I find really aggravating in this respect, uh, try and save you from needing to have this deeper understanding of the architecture of the uh, computer. Uh, and when you hit save, it uh, kind of directly goes to your user directory, and uh, uh, you may not even actually, in some cases, be able to navigate up away from that. Uh, uh, there's just a few set places that you can put things. Uh, uh, in fact, Macs, uh, for the most part, uh, are set so that hidden files are, uh, are hidden and you can't even see them in the finder. Uh, and at some point, everybody using a Mac in this course is probably going to hit this at some point this course of uh, uh, yeah, going, where's my file? I can't find it in the graphical uh, yeah, window. Uh, and we'll have to step through those steps of how do you turn on uh, showing of hidden files in finder. Uh, uh, they've done a lot of this to optimize for that initial use or the usability uh, of the, uh, the system. Uh, but at the cost of uh, uh, understanding how your system is, uh, is actually organized. Now on Windows, uh, they uh, have structured the uh, files and directories uh, in a different way uh, than uh, we'll mostly be talking about for the Unix systems that uh, we uh, work on, and certainly uh, different than, uh, than Mac is. Uh, in Windows, uh, your uh, directory structure, uh, the uh, root of your directory uh, structure is uh, uh, the individual hard drives that are on your computer. So you might see a C drive and a D drive and an E drive, however many hard drives you have on your computer. If you slip in a USB uh, a, a memory stick, that'll show up as a separate hard drive and be given another a separate drive letter on, uh, on Windows. So this is a uh, little bit of a, uh, an incongruous way of uh, relating to this because there's no real root of the system. On Mac and uh, Unix systems, there's always a root of the system. And underneath the root of that system, uh, there uh, is generally a home directory. Uh, and so uh, it, it, this is an important uh, concept because when you go to home and then go to your username, uh, that's kind of the root of your file system. And so when you save something on your Mac uh, and it just kind of offers you the directory and you put it there, uh, that's usually your home directory that it, uh, it, it is offering you. But there's many other places that uh, you, can, uh, yeah, you can go to save things uh, and uh, understanding kind of how the files are organized on your system uh, is, uh, is important. Now it's important to uh, also understand though uh, what is a file and what is a directory. Uh, a directory is nothing but a folder into which other files can be, uh, can be placed. Uh, so uh, that manila folder you might have on the uh, corner of your desk that you throw your bills into and look at once a month, uh, that's essentially the same concept as a uh, folder on the, uh, the computer. Uh, and uh, so there are basically three uh, uh, types of uh, uh, things, uh, and I say things in the most general sense, three types of things that uh, you can navigate uh, in this files and folders hierarchy. Uh, folders are one of them. Uh, files actually have uh, uh, executable files that are treated differently than all other files. Uh, and so if I write a uh, text document with a few strings in it, uh, I can't actually execute that. There's no understanding of what does it mean to execute a Word document or what does it mean to, uh, to execute uh, a uh, text file. Uh, um, uh, when I say execute, I mean run and treat as a program and as a set of uh, consecutive steps to make uh, uh, things happen on the, uh, the computer. And so an executable file uh, is uh, something like uh, a uh, .exe file on Windows uh, or a .bat file, .bat is a batch file on Windows. Uh, uh, in uh, the uh, bash shell, uh, we'll mostly be talking about .sh files. Now this dot uh, is the file extension. So usually when you're saving a file, it has both a name and an extension. Oftentimes that extension is hidden, uh, particularly again, Mac is notorious for, uh, for doing this. Uh, uh, yeah, Windows 10 has started to uh, hide it much more as well. Uh, uh, apparently, we're not smart enough to understand what a three-letter extension is on a file. Uh, um, I firmly disagree uh, and find those extensions the most useful thing uh, about the file because it tells me what type of file that it is. Uh, 
And so uh, there's no concept of executing a text file, but a shell file uh, is just a text file with a different extension on it. Uh, and you put in a shell file commands that uh, talk to the bash shell to make it do useful things. These useful things could be things like uh, giving me a directory listing or uh, deleting a file or creating a file uh, or running a file, uh, all sorts of these low level command window uh, commands. So does that make a little bit more clear the distinction between a uh, folder, a non-executable file and an executable file? Those three concepts are going to get used over and over in, uh, in this course uh, and as we do some of these exercises. I'm going to talk a little bit more about commands in the, uh, uh, the command window here. Uh, and uh, there are a whole bunch of them. Uh, we'll go through a little bit of a demo here in just a few minutes. Uh, um, but uh, finding a listing of the commands you can use in the command window is kind of your first place to start. Uh, and, uh, you know, there'll be 50 or, uh, or so of them if you kind of dig down into all the uh, subcommands and stuff. You're really only going to need to know about a half a dozen of those in, uh, in this course, maybe a dozen by the time you get all the way, get all the way done. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, knowing where the list of commands are uh, and how to read the manual pages for those commands uh, is really the essential step to being able to use a command window uh, because there's nothing in the command uh, prompt itself that's going to tell you how to use it. Uh, so finding the external manual sources is the only way. For instance, even uh, in, uh, knowing what directory you're in uh, in your command window is sometimes a problem. Uh, our first command I'll introduce is PWD, or present working directory. Uh, and so that always shows you what directory it is that you're sitting in. And maybe at this point I should uh, start showing you some of these rather than uh, just um, talking about them. Uh, and uh, so uh, in here in my uh, command window, uh, I don't really know where I am. If I uh, say PWD, it's going to say I'm in uh, C users Derek. Uh, again, because this is a PC uh, and not a Mac or a Linux machine, uh, uh, its directory uh, it, it roots are at the individual drives, and the C drive uh, is my largest hard drive on this machine. And then rather than having a home directory, it has a user's directory, and then Derek is my uh, username on, uh, on this computer. Um, another thing, uh, talking about case. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, this is absolutely expected, uh, that uh, the uh, terminal window on uh, Windows, uh, the CMD window, uh, and the uh, terminal window on Mac term uh, are both different than Bash. Uh, and because some of you are using Macs and some of you are using PCs, uh, I'm going to standardize and talk about Bash commands as compared to uh, Windows commands. Uh, in uh, just a slide or two here, I'm going to have a uh, website uh, link that has uh, the full set of uh, commands, uh, 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 commands for each of the different shells. Uh, and so if you want to use the uh, PC command shell, uh, please feel free to. Uh, but uh, probably for most of the things we're doing in the class, uh, working on the get batch is going to be a preferred approach. It's also worth noting, uh, sorry, uh, uh, before I leave that topic, that uh, there are other uh, terminal uh, shells in, uh, in Windows. Uh, PowerShell is probably the most flexible one. So even if you do want to use a, a non batch shell on Windows, uh, a CMD might not be the, uh, the appropriate one to uh, start with. Oh, I put them on uh, slideshare.net uh, slash direct unless I put them there and didn't hit publish. Um, sorry, let me actually jump off and make sure of that before I uh, go any further. I have been known to do this. Week one, huh? Week two. Oh, there we go. I, I, it looks, in fact, like I uh, uploaded it and then did not uh, publish it. How do I now go back and fix that? Ah, here we go. Public. Yes. Could you double check and see if you can see it now? It's up. Excellent. Thank you.
Okay. Actually, it's not up. It's not up. Yeah. It says that with uh, my friend. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, uh, yeah, hit F5 to refresh, perhaps. Great. Great. Thanks. Sorry about that. Um, I better also, while I am uh, double checking things, double check my recording and make sure that I am actually. Uh, Yes, I am actually recording, and it looks like I am actually getting audio this time. Great. Okay. So we're going to be using the uh, Git Bash uh, terminal because that standardizes across uh, uh, Windows and uh, and Mac uh, and lets us all kind of talk the same language when we're talking about uh, terminal commands. Uh, um, I would encourage you to go look at this uh, ss64.com. Uh, uh, there are a lot of different command line references. Uh, this is one that I uh, find uh, is uh, fa fairly concise and has all the different terminal shells up there. Uh, it lets you do some things like compare them as well, uh, because in some of the shells, uh, you just can't do some things. Uh, and uh, uh, even Bash is not the, uh, uh, the be-all, end-all of shells. Uh, I've been using a uh, shell called uh, ZSH or ZShell lately. Yeah. Uh, which it has a uh, little bit richer scripting language than uh, than Bash does. Uh, but the nice thing about Bash is that it does exist on virtually every system, uh, and it's usually by default installed on Unix systems. Uh, so if you ever log into a uh, remote web server or something, you can be fairly certain that there will be a Bash or a shell there for you to uh, get to use. So let's uh, look at a few more uh, commands in here. Uh, uh, get directory listings. Uh, for instance, on the PC, if you're in that command shell, George, you'd use a DIR, uh, but uh, we'll use LS uh, uh, for the, uh, yeah, the listings uh, uh, because we're in that uh, bash shell. And so if I'm in here and I want to see what's in that uh, yeah, C users direct, uh, yeah, directory, yeah, I'll do uh, an LS command. Uh, uh, so you can see in my shell, uh, I've got some color schemes defined, and I uh, unfortunately don't remember if these were the defaults or if I changed them. Uh, uh, at some point, there are configuration files for all of these, so you can make the uh, windows look like you uh, you want to. Uh, but uh, my directories are in uh, darker blue, uh, and uh, then uh, my links are in this lighter blue, uh, uh, and then my files are in uh, in white in here. Uh, now, I'm not actually uh, with this ls command uh, seeing all the things about those files and directories. Uh, as we look up on that ss64.com uh, site, uh, the commands for the shell, uh, not only do you see commands, but you see modifiers to those commands. Uh, usually modifiers to commands uh, in a uh, bash shell uh, have a minus sign in front of them. So if I were to say uh, ls minus uh, uh, l, uh, then uh, I'm going to uh, see a view of these files that has a lot more data. Um, for instance, in here, uh, let's look at uh, the uh, um, untangling directory. That's where I store the uh, files for this uh, yeah, this class. Uh, the D here is saying it's a directory. Uh, uh, the read, write, execute are uh, saying that uh, that's what the RWX are. Uh, that's saying that my logged in user uh, has permissions to uh, read this uh, directory, to write this directory, and to execute this directory. Yeah. The next, the uh, R-X, uh, means that users in my security group, uh, which you don't need to think about too much in here, uh, uh, but uh, in my security group have uh, read and execute permissions, but no write permissions. Uh, and then all users on the system have uh, read and execute permissions. Uh, and so this is something that you can set if you want to keep your file locked down to just you being able to see it, nobody else logged on the system. Uh, uh, you can use uh, a command called uh, a, a, a chmod uh, to uh, change those directory uh, permissions. Don't worry too much about that one. We won't use that in this class, but I'm just trying to give you some examples of uh, the different types of commands that uh, are available to operate on files and directories uh, with, uh, yeah, within here. Now, even here, I'm not seeing all of my uh, files. Uh, it's fairly common uh, to uh, have files that uh, are hidden files. Uh, and uh, so if I were to uh, use a, another uh, a variant of the command, uh, remember I had ls minus l this last time, I'm going to say ls minus la, and that a is going to uh, get, say, give me the long directory listing of all files in the directory. And I pull that up and I slide back up uh, and uh, should now be able to see all these files that started with a dot that I didn't previously have viewable to me. So by uh, changing the uh, command line parameters, is another name for uh, those uh, modifiers. Uh, you're able to get commands to operate in different ways to give you just exactly the uh, effect that, uh, yeah, that you want to have them have. 
let's talk about a different set of uh, command uh, line commands. Uh, now, I asked you last week in the uh, yeah, the homework uh, in the uh, slides to do this to give me the whole text file that you found the uh, amount of RAM and disk space on your uh, computer in. But because we didn't cover this description of the uh, command line, uh, I didn't make anybody actually do that. Uh, it's really easy to uh, uh, to do though uh, with your command line commands to pipe things. Pipe is a uh, term for moving the output of one command into the input of a, uh, another command or into a text file. And so let's say that uh, in uh, this directory listing, uh, uh, I wanted to uh, save that in a text file so I could do something with it. Maybe edit it, maybe uh, send it to somebody in an email. Uh, I'm going to uh, do this uh, by uh, uh, just going to the same command that I typed in last time. And incidentally, if you were watching really closely, you might have noticed that I didn't actually type that command in. Uh, I just hit up arrow. Up arrow is a shortcut that I want you all to remember uh, that uh, goes to the previous commands that you have executed in a uh, terminal. And you can hit it any number of times. If I keep going up arrow, uh, you see me going back to present working directory and ls and ls minus l and ls minus la. Yeah. It means that you really don't have to remember all of the things that uh, you uh, have uh, typed in in your terminal, uh, and you don't have to type them in by hand every time. It's an enormous time saver uh, just to be able to up error a couple times and then execute them all over again. Do be careful, of course, that uh, if you change directories from where you executed it previously, uh, it executes it in whatever directory you're now in. Uh, so you can uh, do the wrong thing by going up error and running a command again, uh, but it's a real time saver. So let's say I wanted to take that uh, a, a command, the uh, directory listing here in this directory, uh, and put it into a text file. And uh, so I'm going to uh, come up here, and I'm going to pipe it into uh, directory.txt. And if I now say uh, ls again, I should have a uh, file up in here uh, called uh, uh, directory. Hey, where'd my directory.test go? Oh, there it is, directory.text. And so uh, this doesn't do me a whole lot of good uh, with it just being in the, uh, the file there, uh, but uh, I could use another command line command to uh, output the contents of that uh, file. That's called cat. And so if I say cat directory, did something else here that's a shortcut that you probably couldn't see because I was typing. Uh, I just typed in uh, cat dir, and then I hit tab as long as you type enough of a command that it is not ambiguous. So uh, if I had a, a, a directors.txt and a directory.txt, I couldn't do this. I'd have to type enough of that uh, text, uh, or that uh, file name uh, to make it non-ambiguous. But as soon as it's non-ambiguous, you can hit tab and it will complete that file name for you. This is a really good thing to uh, think about as you're thinking about file names to save things as, is uh, having them be different enough that you can uh, use sh shortcuts like this to get to them really quickly. So I say cat directory.txt, and it's just going to spit that uh, directory listing back up at me. Now you'll notice a little bit of a difference uh, that uh, yeah, this directory listing that it's spitting at me, it doesn't have all the colors in it. Uh, uh, this is because uh, it's just treating it as a text file and saying, uh, put this text file to the screen. It's no longer treating it as a directory listing like my ls command was. Uh, so it doesn't have the additional information to make them different colors like they were. And it's just a text file. So that text file, of course, contains no information other than the text. Uh, every character that you see in a text file is all that's stored in that text file. There's no additional meta information. Um, I'm kind of flying through some of these in part because uh, you know, we've got a recording with me going through these in the example and talking about them. So when you at some point get stuck on uh, command line commands, uh, pop back and look at this uh, yeah, this recording and look at those. Uh, but in a minute, we're going to be going through an exercise and you'll have a chance to uh, play with some of these commands as well and give me a shout if you're having problems with them. Of course, there are lots of other pipes. Uh, if uh, I wanted to uh, a, a, a pipe something into a command, uh, uh, let's say that I had a, uh, a text file with the uh, name of a whole bunch of other files in that, uh, yeah, that directory, uh, and I wanted to delete all those files. Uh, I could uh, yeah, say, uh, yeah, redirect this file name into that command. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, rm, uh, yeah, 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 open uh, yeah, yeah, caret, uh, and then uh, files.txt would send all those files to that rm command, uh, and it would delete each of those files. Uh, now, if I just said rm, it would prompt me each say, time saying, are you sure? Uh, if I said rm minus rf, giving it this modifier, this is uh, an rm minus recursive, so it jumps down folders and deletes all the files in the folders, and minus f uh, says force to make it do it without asking. 
this is probably the most dangerous command you have on your system. Uh, because if you're RM minus RF in the wrong place, it'll go recursively delete everything from there on down and never give you a chance to stop it. Uh, so uh, it, it, the downside of the command window being so powerful and so pre precisely implemented is that uh, if you do something uh, you shouldn't be doing, uh, it, it's really going to mess you up. Uh, and so you have to be very certain as you use the uh, yeah, command window that you know what you're using it for and that you're using it properly. If you try and delete all your files in Windows or on your Mac, uh, it's going to ask you every time, are you sure, are you sure? Uh, and even when you do delete them, it'll move them to the recycle bin. If you were wrong, you can pull them back from the recycle bin. Uh, an RM minus RF, uh, for the most part, doesn't do that. They're just gone forever gone. Uh, um, now, we could get into what gone forever gone means. In fact, they're not. You could get a yeah, program that goes down to a sector editor on the disk and restore them manually and kind of hack them back into existence, but uh, really, really tough, and you don't want to go there. Uh, unless you're the FBI trying to reconstruct somebody's crime scene, uh, that's the kind of process that uh, isn't worth anybody's time. Um, yes? Uh, it depends on how you type it. Uh, if uh, you, uh, you type it this way with a single carrot, uh, then it is going to uh, replace the uh, contents of that file already. If you type it with a double carrot, uh, it will redirect an appendix to the file, so we'll just plug it onto the, uh, the end of it. Oh, uh, but different directions. Uh, that uh, the uh, the uh, open carrot uh, uh, means that uh, the results of this command will go to a file. By if there's anything in that file, get rid of it. Uh, I, uh, the second one, the uh, two open carrots, uh, will say uh, go to uh, this file and append it to the bottom of that file. Uh, and the third one, uh, the uh, closed carrot, will say uh, take the things from this file uh, and pass them to this command. And so then it's not going to uh, do anything to that file. That file gets treated put sort of the Um, yeah, so I, I just went through a few of these. We, these were the pieces for the homework last week. Uh, don't uh, don't worry about them specifically. Yeah, um, but uh, if you want to uh, to try and do the uh, yeah, this last week's homework uh, by uh, means of uh, uh, the text window uh, and dumping it into text files, uh, uh, by all means, it's a good exercise to uh, to play with. Uh, what I'd like to uh, do uh, for uh, our first uh, in-class exercise are a few pieces here. Uh, I want you to create a directory uh, for the class in your git bash terminal. Uh, and I'll just kind of step through these uh, pieces so you know what I'm uh, talking about. Uh, um, let me uh, move my untangling directory uh, to, uh, I don't know, untangling. Uh, that's a really bad one. Uh, um, other untangling. That's just to get it out of the way so I uh, don't have to have it in the midst and telling you what I'm uh, uh, doing here. Uh, so untangling the uh, web is the name of the class, and so I'll uh, make a new directory uh, for uh, the class uh, untangling. Uh, and uh, where did this go? Uh, this uh, went to my home directory. Yeah, so uh, if I uh, instead said that, uh, that's another way of saying home. Uh, uh, yep, sure enough, there's my untangling. Uh, uh, if I uh, navigate to the top of my uh, file structure, there we go. Where am I now? Uh, um, oh, I'm right at the top. Uh, well, what's at the top? Oh, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, uh, how do I get back? Uh, I get back by going to my home directory, uh, and there's my home directory. Uh, and uh, then uh, create a directory listing like I did just a minute ago. So, so that's a bunch of things that I've flown through really quickly, but you've now at least seen me do them, uh, do them all. Uh, why don't you take uh, 
uh, just five or uh, seven minutes here uh, and make sure that uh, on your machines you can do each of these, creating a directory, uh, yeah, putting a list of files into a text file uh, and navigating around among directories. And shout when you get stuck. Yeah. Use your terminal uh, when I say git bash, and it actually is a bash shell. And so, so you use this. Okay. And the way that you've got to do that is exactly. Okay. Uh, so, 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 the file is basically a thing store Thank you. 
So an example I just said, uh, I uh, primarily use the CD command to change directories uh, that can get me the command in the present working directory uh, and the LS uh, the LS command of So uh, and uh, I, I should actually have put on this one that uh, uh, CSC4 on site uh, that uh, was the uh, place where all these commands live. Uh, SS64.com. So you've got a bash shell open and uh, you installed a uh, it, 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 all right. Uh, this is the state of max There is a uh, one. I found it in the new area. Uh, should we have an email so it's right at the top? And I'll do that right now. Oh, to, back to which one? To the exercise one? Sure. Yeah, you bet. Um, and actually, I won't because people are needing that slide. If I jump down to your email, then I'll do that. There, so, uh, so, Oh, 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 uh, 
Uh, so on, please finish the answer and get an arrogance call. Uh, so uh, if you uh, say no and you're at an end, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, the board of that, uh, uh, not, uh, uh, you know, and uh, tend to have a little bit of a the uh, stupid presentation that half of you can't get to anymore. <laughs> Uh, the name of the file you're creating, yeah, or by the directory you're creating, by all means, anything you'd like it to be. Yep. So, uh, uh, this is, uh, 
It's only a little bit more necessary. Remember when I yeah, talked about the most of the share that you could take into the file? So if you say LS space and then open the yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. Space and then Yeah, exactly. I'm just wanting to be able to navigate up and down and down. You always get a very, 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 very
uh, CD space uh, slash or CD space tilde. Um, uh, if slash goes to the very root of your uh, file system, uh, you get tilde to the very directory and dot dot. And so those are your three upward navigating commands. Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, great. Well, so now we are actually using Git to get to the in just a minute, uh, but uh, uh, now uh, we're back in the essential process of just about navigating the directory. Uh, and, uh, so uh, uh, can you tell me what directory you're in? Uh, PWP is working in the directory. So you're in uh, user switch. Now, uh, can you create a directory? And if you want to see what's in that file, you can see the cabinet space in the back. And it will uh, be yeah. So those are all commands that uh, you'll uh, you'll need to set to class in the future. Of course, there's a lot more commands that over time, but uh, they all follow that same pattern of that command and the modifier. Okay, everybody come to either a place of sufficient stuckness or a uh, place of uh, a satisfaction with what we're working on. Do you want to move, move ahead? Yep, okay, let's move ahead. So uh, actually, before we move ahead, I'm going to uh, run through this one more time just because uh, I want to have it on the uh, yeah, the recording for you guys to be able to see later. Uh, um, uh, yeah, so uh, it, this was, uh, where's my bash shell? Uh, let me, uh, rm minus r untangling. That got rid of it. Um, 
So uh, going through this exercise, create a directory for the cl class. We'll uh, uh, do a uh, MKDIR uh, untangling. I'm going to uh, navigate into it with a CD command. Uh, I'm going to see what's in there. I'm going to see what directory I'm in. Great, something's in here. Uh, let me get back out of it uh, with that CD space dot dot. Uh, if instead I wanted to, uh, from in here, uh, uh, navigate to my home directory, I could say CD space tilde, and that's a special character that gets me to that same thing, the root of my home directory. Uh, if I wanted to uh, get uh, all the way to the top of my uh, directory tree, CD space slash does that. Uh, um, but I don't want to, I want to be in my home directory, so I'll be here, uh, and I want to pump that uh, directory listing into uh, a uh, text file, uh, directory listing.txt, and uh, let me make sure it's there. Well, let me make sure it's there. There it is. And uh, then the special command to output it, uh, directory uh, listing.txt, and there it went. So that was basically the run through of that exercise. Uh, and all I was trying to get that at, at with that exercise uh, is to uh, uh, get across the concept that uh, files go inside folders. Uh, anywhere you are on your system, uh, you're either looking at a folder or a file within a folder. Uh, that you uh, have some command line commands to navigate those files and folders to find where it is the, uh, that the files that you want to work with are sitting. Uh, that you can always find out where you are by saying PWD or present working directory. Uh, you can always use CD or change directory to uh, navigate uh, up and down. Uh, and then that concept of uh, a, a file listings with LS uh, and finally file pipes with that open caret uh, to pipe it into a text file. Uh, and cat you won't usually use. Uh, this is one you can uh, probably forget for the most part because the uh, next thing we'll talk about here are text editors. Uh, and usually you'll uh, just jump to an editor rather than saying cat to put things into the uh, terminal window. But there are a lot of other commands in the terminal uh, and uh, you'll come across more of them uh, as, uh, as the class goes on. Uh, um, before we go into this next section, everybody who's working on an exercise is, uh, do people need a five minute break to go do something other than computer stuff? Uh, let, let's, let's come back at uh, 7.20 uh, and start the next section. You, uh, you send me an email, I'll put it on the Slack channel, uh, and uh, I am making some offers to folks who are on the wait list today who have been doing homework, uh, and uh, if we do have room left uh, and you do this week's homework, uh, then I start the next class to make some additional offer for people to get off the wait list. I haven't looked at the link for the wait list. Uh, I don't know how many are still on there right now. Yes, yes. If, if you send me an email right now, then I'll add you right out of the Slack channel and I'll uh, send you the lecture. <laughs> Did, uh, sorry, I also didn't give you my email. Uh, do you need my email address? Yeah. Yeah.
Sorry, I don't see an email from you yet. Should I add you? Oh, you're okay. Oh, no, let me look again. Uh, no. Oh, yes, absolutely. This is uh, <laughs> what I'm going to do for her as well, but absolutely. Uh, 
Um, I, I have not seen your email yet. What, what is your email address? Would you like to simply tell me and have you add you to this left? Oh, Yahoo's kind of slow sometimes. Um, uh, and space. A. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> J I. D-A-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-S-I-
source code control really wasn't a thing. Uh, that uh, my version of source code control was to keep floppy disks uh, sitting under my uh, dresser, uh, and I'd pile them up and keep old versions on there. And when something broke, uh, I'd go back to the pile of floppy disks, and it was a nightmare. Uh, a lot of people still code that way. Yeah, they don't use floppy disks anymore. They use them on directories on their uh, hard drive. Uh, but uh, if you don't lose uh, use source control, uh, eventually you're going to lose things. Uh, eventually, you're going to break something, not realize you broke it until uh, a couple weeks down the road, uh, and come back and try and use that bit of your program, and it doesn't work, and you don't have any idea why. Source code saves you from all of that. Uh, basically, every time you make a substantial change in the code that you're working on, when you have a source code uh, control system, or revision control system, uh, uh, you'll go ahead and commit that change, uh, and it will keep a line-by-line, uh, -line, uh, a character-by-character -character change of what you did to change things there. Uh, and your commit log, which is your little message to yourself uh, uh, saying, here's what I changed with this commit and why. And when working on your own, this is uh, important. Uh, when working with a group, it is absolutely vital. If you've got three or four people in a project group all contributing their source code, all making changes, uh, being able to piece who changed what and why uh, is the absolutely essential part of uh, working in group development. Uh, and group development is really a thing, I think, because of source code control. Uh, it, uh, again, when I started uh, doing software development, group development wasn't the thing. Uh, it basically had a whole bunch of individual developers to work on their own pieces, uh, and then you try and put them together into something bigger somewhere down the road. Uh, uh, source code control really lets you work on the same files and the same sections at the same time and not step on each other's toes. So, if you use it properly. Uh, so it's a lot safer. Uh, it lets things move around from machine to machine more easily because you can just clone and pull things down to the new machine you want to work on. Uh, uh, and uh, really helps the workflow. Uh, and then finally, this is your developer portfolio. Um, we're going to have things up on GitHub because if you ever decide you want to go into a software job writing code for someone, uh, the first thing they're going to do is look at your GitHub and go, what have you worked on before? And so putting neat demos or neat samples and things that just show that uh, you know what you're about uh, up on your GitHub is a yeah, really good uh, practice. Uh, we've talked about this. I just wanted to be in the slide deck in case you uh, didn't get through this uh, in uh, last week's getting ready for this class, uh, but it's there in the deck if you want to uh, look at it if you haven't gotten there. Um, there are a lot of other source code control uh, uh, programs out there. Uh, we're not going to talk about them in here. Uh, I've had the extreme uh, uh, misfortune of using SVN and a lot of other ones here, uh, and uh, uh, Git's really become the predominant source code control management software, uh, and for a reason. It's much uh, simpler to use and more powerful than most of the other solutions that are out there. Uh, a couple of folks like Perforce, and uh, they're a local uh, Victoria company that builds a source code control management system, uh, would probably dis disagree with me on that, uh, but they're wrong. <laughs> oh, you might ask what Git stands for, uh, and, and in reality, nobody really knows what Git stands for. Uh, uh, people have made things up. Uh, it, it just kind of sounds like Git, but Git was already taken. Uh, uh, in reality, uh, Linus Torvalds, uh, the uh, primary developer on Linux, uh, uh, created Git as a version control system for uh, Linux, uh, and uh, uh, he says that he just kind of uh, found a random three-letter word that was still free and wasn't some other command, and that was his source code control command. Uh, nobody really knows. He probably doesn't even remember. Um, I would advise you to avoid the Git tools. There are a whole bunch of Git tools. You have some installed on the uh, lab machines here even. When they installed Git for Windows, uh, it installed GUI tools in addition to the uh, command line tools. Uh, and uh, certainly they work. Uh, if you check out a project using the GUI tools, you'll get that project down. If you check into a project using the GUI tools, you'll check things back in okay. Uh, but at some point, it's going to break for you. Uh, and that point might be when you have two people trying to check in uh, the same file at the same time and you have to edit it. Uh, uh, that point might be when you want to jump back in history a few versions beyond what the uh, GUI will let you do. Uh, there will come a point where the GUI will obscure your understanding of Git. Uh, and so in this class, I'm going to talk about the command line tools for using Git. Uh, and if at some point you decide the GUI tools are more efficient for you, by all means, go for it. Uh, um, but uh, I tend to be a command line uh, guy, and I prefer to understand things on that uh, on that level. Uh, and so I'm going to ask that uh, you uh, try things from the command line uh, and don't uh, uh, jump up to a GUI tool for the most part in this class, uh, unless you really know how all the uh, GUI tools uh, uh, sit on top of the command line and, and how to do things in the command line uh, to start with. So this is kind of what... Uh, I pulled this bit out of my slide deck from a later week uh, and built my slides really fast, and I think I didn't actually mean to have this right here. 
let's quietly slide past this. And uh, if I want to come back to the uh, Git demo in a few minutes, I will do that. But there are a couple of concepts I want to explain before we quite actually get there. Um, the, the, this was from a, uh, a week four slide deck when I uh, pulled Git in uh, last uh, term, uh, but decided that was too late and that people didn't understand uh, enough about how to use it unless I had them using it in every class. Uh, we'll come back to this piece though. Uh, this is in here primarily to uh, give an example uh, of, uh, of Git in a video format from somebody else uh, in case I don't explain things quite to uh, your, uh, the way you're understanding. Uh, this is a half hour discussion of the Git bash terminal uh, and uh, how to use uh, a, a, a Git bash. Uh, if you are confused at the end of this class about Git bash and the Git commands, I would highly encourage that you watch this video uh, and consider that part of preparation for uh, next week's class. Uh, uh, if you uh, have other ways of learning how to use Git and follow the exercises just fine, don't bother watching this video. Uh, it will be duplication of what I'm saying in this class and going through the uh, demo of in this class. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, you'll have to go back to a lot of this stuff more than once. Uh, I suspect you'll have to go back to some of the command line stuff more than once as well. Uh, and uh, if uh, you're uh, confused on command line stuff and one other resources, uh, this is exactly the kind of thing to post to the Slack channel about. Uh, I've got a big folder of uh, videos and resources for things in this class. Uh, and uh, uh, certainly I can answer questions with pointers to resources to uh, get more depth and more uh, coverage of things that you might understand after my lectures. Um, I'm not going to walk through using branches either. I wanted that to be here. Uh, we won't talk about branches until class five or six when we get into the group project, but uh, all, all the good stuff was going to be in, uh, in one place here. So with that, I'm going to jump back to some of these essential commands and show you an example of, uh, of using uh, Git. Uh, and uh, some of these will be uh, uh, the same example I just showed you a minute ago in a uh, command window, uh, but uh, we'll do things just a, uh, a little bit differently. And this is actually uh, the example that uh, is most pertinent to uh, this week's homework as well. Uh, and uh, just going to give you a, a preview of, uh, oh shoot, if I uh, don't pop beyond the end of the, uh, the screen. Um, so what I'm going to ask you to do for this week's homework is create a new project in GitHub, uh, add a readme from the web page, uh, clone the project, uh, and then uh, create a short JavaScript program to add three numbers. Uh, and we'll talk about how to do that piece in a few minutes. Uh, check that file into your GitHub repo uh, and then send me the GitHub repo link. And so what my goal is in this section of the uh, demo in the class uh, is to uh, try and untangle these pieces uh, so that you know what I'm talking about on all these steps. Now, I do expect that you will have to uh, get back up on that Slack channel uh, and, uh, and ask some questions about each of these, uh, these steps. Uh, but uh, that's uh, kind of the basics. And, uh, and it's really only about a half a dozen commands that uh, I'm asking you to do in here, with the exception of the JavaScript uh, programming piece, which uh, I uh, hope that we get to, uh, to today. If not, then I'll give some shortcuts as to how to do that piece. So let me do a, a quick uh, a, a, a Git demo here. Uh, and uh, the last piece that uh, I think I'll uh, do, just so I have a file that'll uh, fit in this, uh, a, this demo, uh, is talk about an online code editing tool called uh, JS Fiddle. Uh, it's just a place that you can make uh, a little sketches of programs. Uh, and uh, so I'll come back to this piece in, uh, in just a minute. But let me go up to uh, JS Fiddle. Uh, a couple of pieces. Uh, JSFiddle.com. Uh, Boy, my computer gets slow when I'm streaming off of it. It's actually kind of infuriating. Come on. You're not a slow computer. You only act like you're a slow computer. JSFiddle.net. Oh, is it? Thank you. Maybe you're not as slow a computer as I was thinking you are. Excellent. Thanks. Um, so we'll come back to some of these programming pieces. I'm really just doing this as an example. Uh, um, but uh, I want to uh, do a couple of things in JS Fiddle. I want to declare a variable. A variable is something that uh, holds something else. Uh, uh, we'll talk about programming concepts in a minute. I'm going to call this variable x. And I'm going to uh, put into this variable uh, a uh, prompt uh, saying uh, enter something. And then I'm going to uh, put up a, uh, an alert box that uh, just uh, shows back what I enter. 
that's enough for right now. So if I run this, uh, enter something, uh, hello, hello. That's the simplest program in the uh, world in JS Fiddle. Uh, you can ask questions with prompt. You can uh, put things back out with alert. Uh, so great, I've written a program. Uh, I want to uh, uh, do something with that program now. Uh, let me get back out of the way. Uh, uh, let me go to my GitHub, and I presume you all created a GitHub.com account uh, last week. If you haven't, go to GitHub.com and create an account. And I'm going to, uh, well, here, I could have done it from there, actually. Yeah, I'm going to start a project. Uh, and we'll call this little example. Perfect. And whenever I create a project, I initialize it with a readme. Uh, a readme file is just a file that you can put what the program you're writing or what the project you're uh, creating is about into. Uh, and uh, so uh, it, uh, it also though serves the purpose that uh, it's harder to uh, clone or bring down an empty project. Uh, and so a readme just puts something placeholder like in that project. So great, I'm going to now uh, pick up this clone or download link. Uh, and uh, then I will go uh, back to my command window over here. I am uh, remember uh, when we were in command window, I created this uh, directory for the untangling uh, class. And there's nothing in my directory. So I'm now going to use my first git command. And this git clone command is the command that says, uh, go up to my GitHub repository uh, and bring down the git project, in this case, that it is at this link. And remember, I got that link by uh, in my project after I created the project doing this clone link and copying that. Now, you'll often copy that as the HTTPS form, and you'll have to enter your GitHub credentials at some point as you try and push back up. Uh, I'm using something called SSH uh, for authentication. Uh, it just say, it means I don't have to type passwords here in front of you. Uh, uh, don't really worry about that. Just feel free to use the uh, simpler HTTPS version uh, when you're cloning. So that's going to clone into little example the name of my project, and it uh, pulls down a few things, three objects. Uh, uh, let me uh, do an ls, so I now see, yep, I have a little example directory, so I'll cd into little example. I'll see what I have there, and there's nothing but a readme. Yeah. So uh, great, now I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, create the file with the JavaScript in there that is in my JS Fiddle application. There's another uh, a command called touch that just creates a file. Uh, so uh, in this case, I'm going to uh, uh, just name it something, little.js, for instance. And now if I do ls, you can see that I've got one more file here in this directory, uh, little.js. Now, this doesn't have anything in it. If I looked at uh, little.js, there wouldn't be anything there. Uh, um, but uh, that's enough for me to be able to launch Visual Studio Code on top of little.js uh, and begin putting the uh, stuff in there that I, uh, that I want. Um, no, update later. Okay. No, I thought I said update later. Apologies. Apparently I didn't say update later. So little JS is empty. I'm going to go up to my fiddle where I was playing with the JS file. I'm going to copy these, and I'll paste it into uh, little.js. And then I will save little.js. Perfect. I'm done with my text editor for the moment. If I now uh, look back at this, there is a new command that uh, I can run in git called git status. That will always tell me the state of the files in my Git repository. Uh, remember, my Git repository uh, is kind of like this managed folder that always knows what's supposed to be in that folder. Uh, and if I do something in the local directory, in the local folder on my system, uh, that isn't up on the uh, website in the repository on GitHub, uh, it's going to know that. Uh, and uh, so these Git commands will uh, let me keep track of the differences between my local system and the system that I've pushed up to github.com to store the permanent version for me. Yeah. And here, by saying git status, uh, I've had it uh, tell me uh, that little.js uh, is uh, a modified file or a new file that uh, GitHub doesn't know about. So great, let's add it. Now if I say git status, it'll tell me that uh, 
Yep, great. I've got a new file, little.js, that has been added. There's an important concept in GitHub called a commit. A commit is any time that you're bundling up a bunch of changes into one set of things that you're pushing up to GitHub. And so in this, my only change is little.js. Uh, so a commit is same, the same as the file that I just added. But in most cases, when you're working on a bigger program, uh, that commit might be many, many things. Uh, you might be adding uh, uh, 10 files. You might be modifying five files that were there. You might be uh, uh, changing the database. Uh, and so the commit is bundling all this stuff up into one set of changes that all happens at once. Uh, and this is important because when you give a commit message, you're basically saying what the point of this particular commit is. Uh, and it should be the point of all the files that you've touched and kind of the reason for doing this commit at this time. In this case, I haven't done much, uh, so uh, I'm just going to uh, say uh, my message uh, is uh, adding a file. And it will say that, great, I've committed uh, little.js. Um, this is still not up on github.com. The third git command that you'll need uh, for uh, every time you make a change is push. And so git push is what's going to uh, send that back up to the repository on github.com. Now if I come up on uh, github.com uh, and refresh that, I'm going to see little.js up on GitHub. Uh, and uh, there's my little uh, program that's running on GitHub. So to summarize on this, uh, yeah, there uh, were uh, uh, the cloning commands. I created on github.com my project. I gave it a project name. Uh, I copied that clone uh, path from the project. Uh, I used the git clone command to make a copy of that project on my local machine. Then I went ahead and edited things in that project that I wanted to edit. In this case, I used JS Fiddle and uh, created a JavaScript file, but really it's anything you want to put in there. Uh, if we'd chosen to put that uh, directory listing from uh, a, a, the exercise a minute ago in GitHub, we could have done that. Uh, any file you copy to that folder that you've just cloned, uh, is going to uh, be part of your commit. Uh, so I said git add to add the files to make them part of that uh, commit. Uh, my git commit was the uh, uh, bundling of that up into one message that went up uh, to tell me what the purpose of the commit was, uh, and then git push, pushed it up to github.com. So these few steps, and it's really just these three steps, git add, git commit, and git push, are the three steps that are the loop of every uh, time you make an edit and every time you work with uh, a source code control management system, uh, you'll do this uh, yeah, git add, git commit, git push, uh, and uh, that will allow you to uh, keep these commits uh, uh, tracked and in ways that you can step back to if you need to go back to a previous version of something that you've worked on. Um, I think at this point, I'd better pause there and uh, either let people play with this or uh, try and deconfuse people before you play with it, uh, because I see a, a few overwhelmed faces uh, out there. Uh, what uh, what part should uh, we uh, cover in more detail, or give you a few minutes to uh, to play with? Uh, let me get a bit of a show of hands of who has a GitHub account at this point. Oh, fantastic! Excellent. Um, uh, who in here has created a, Git repo a GitHub repository before? A couple of you. So maybe that's the first step. Uh, why don't I uh, get uh, all of y'all to uh, just spend the next uh, uh, two or three uh, minutes creating an example of uh, GitHub repository. Uh, and uh, that's just going up to your GitHub and saying create new project uh, and give it a name and uh, then give it a readme file. Uh, oh, uh, so you're going to have to get uh, you there and then go to uh, the Well, it's actually open in this case. If you already had your property, and you can do that. It's literally already in there, uh, and it will be in your user registry. Uh, <laughs> 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 
Oh, it's already so much. Yeah, if you uh, don't get there, get back. Uh, get back. Uh, get Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. You do that. I'll be up here and all that. And all that. Okay. I'm not going to help you yet. I'm going to get the old report for you. Okay. 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 Uh, JS Fiddle for right now. You can't execute JavaScript directly from the uh, command line. I'll leave Visual Code for uh, Visual Studio Code will show you the text, but it still won't execute the JavaScript. Oh, okay. uh, there are a few more steps that we won't get to today for uh, executing JavaScript locally on your machine. So um, I'm going to come back to the uh, next step. Everybody has gotten a uh, repo created, it looks like. Uh, and what I mean by gotten a repo created is just that you have an example on uh, GitHub uh, and that on that example on GitHub, uh, you can find this clone uh, URL. And so from there, uh, what we're doing is jumping back into the command window. Uh, and uh, let me uh, come back up here. And uh, I'm going to get rid of my uh, little example uh, just so that uh, I can do this over again. 
So I've got nothing here again. Hey, why did you not get rid of that? Where am I? Oh, because I think I have that open in Visual Studio Code still. So I will close that. Um, so I'm just doing that to get rid of my project. And this is actually an important thing to, uh, to know is that uh, if you ever want to get rid of a uh, local clone of a uh, GitHub project, just delete it. That uh, it, it, all the stuff is uh, saved up on GitHub, assuming you've pushed the last time. Uh, and if you want it off your machine, delete it and then recreate it somewhere else. Uh, one of the big advantages of source code control is that you don't have to worry about your local machine. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it's all backed up uh, on GitHub. And so uh, if I want to uh, create something here again, I'm going to uh, clone and make sure I have this address copied uh, and paste that address in. And that will clone my example down into here. Now, of course, in my example, uh, I uh, already have the uh, uh, little.js file in there. Uh, and uh, so all of y'all, if you've just cloned uh, your uh, empty repository, you'll have nothing but a readme in that repository. Uh, and so the next step is going to uh, be to uh, create something that's, uh, a, 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 that's in there. You can either go through uh, the uh, steps I did to create little.js, uh, or since we're really just talking about GitHub at this point uh, and not uh, the uh, JavaScript pieces, we'll come back around to JavaScript in a minute. What happened? That's not good. That's significantly not good. It was giving a warning at the start of class saying, uh, this projector bulb is at the end of its useful life. Please change the bulb. And then it worked anyways. I have this fear that uh, at the end of its useful life might be uh, 7.52 PM. <laughs> uh, huh. That's going to be problematic. OK. Get to that point, and uh, I will go ask help to ask why the heck my projector is doing that thing. Yeah. Right. Stay on, please. Don't blow up, please. A lot of these projectors, I think they've uh, changed in the latest version, but uh, um, I had uh, yeah, one of the uh, first DLP projectors, uh, and the bulb, uh, it, it would uh, stop after 1,000 hours giving a message kind of like this, because uh, uh, between 1,000 and 2,000 hours, they would blow up and, and, and quite literally uh, shatter the projector with their exploding bulb. Uh, and so this was a safety thing to uh, give it a uh, time limit uh, measured by hours on the bulb. Uh, and uh, so I've always been nervous of these things ever since. Uh, but, um, right, where was I? So uh, get clone to get the project down into your uh, directory. Uh, and uh, then I talked about all of the things with the, uh, the editor uh, and uh, yeah, JS Fiddle. Uh, and in actuality, for just getting the GitHub pieces uh, here, uh, those aren't that important. Uh, if you wanted a different way uh, of uh, yeah, just getting a file created, uh, 
uh, let's just call it file two. Uh, we can uh, use the echo command line command. Uh, and so if I uh, say echo, uh, this is another file. Contents, I guess it's the contents of the file, not the file. And I pipe that to file2.txt. So again, unpacking this, uh, uh, what I'm doing is using a command line command called echo. All echo does is uh, you spit out the text that I give it in quotes. Uh, and uh, what I'm doing with that text is using the same pipe command we used just a minute ago to pipe the directory listing to a text file. Uh, and so all I'm saying is uh, I, uh, create a text file with the contents of that text file being this is another file contents uh, and save it as file2.txt. Does that part make sense to everyone? So now I've got a uh, file 2.txt here. Uh, you had a question, George? Uh, so, so this was what I went through a minute ago with the, uh, the going through JS Fiddle and creating a little program and using the editor to edit it and copy that in. And I'm saying that this is not necessary for understanding Git. But for understanding Git, if you replace the little dot JS just with this echo and create a file, uh, then that will allow you to explore the Git command just the same way. Um, so again, if I'm now uh, in here saying Git status, I'm going to see that I've got a new file, file2.txt. Uh, what do I do when I have a new file? Well, I do my three git, git commands again. Git add, period, which just means add all the files. Git commit, minus m for a message. Here is another commit. And git push. And that's going to push it up to GitHub. So now on GitHub, if I refresh it, I've got another file up here. File2.txt with not much in it. But um, So I'd like everybody to take just a couple minutes to uh, get to that point where you successfully create a file, either by using the echo command on the command line uh, or by uh, using uh, the uh, method through the text editor that uh, I showed a moment ago. Uh, and uh, when you have a uh, file, uh, uh, I'll uh, uh, let me get that echo command back up. Uh, there we go. Uh, when you have a file in there, uh, go ahead and use your three git commands: uh, git add, uh, a, a, a git commit, and git push to push those up to your git repository. And you off the phone. Uh, a, 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 a person, I'm going to run around and do here, here, here. Right. So, uh, what are your three years? I think three years are three years. That's kind of like the somewhere to put the stuff after that. Okay, that's probably where you are. Are we going to create a directory command? Yeah, I know. Just the whole one where you have the IR in the space and then you name the directory board. Do you have a password? Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, you just want to give it a name. This is all just so that you don't put it up in the home directory. Uh, and now you want to go uh, copy the home path to your uh, process. Oh, sure, yeah. Okay. So, Uh, 
So now you can navigate into that make a file change using that echo command and then that, 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 that uh, it's on screen there the echo command uh, it, it creates a file uh, that's another way of creating a file. There, there are just different ways of, well they do different things. They, uh, this one puts something in the file and that just creates the file. But there's both of that for the purpose of the file.
Yeah, you can't go to the same place. Uh, if you do it in OS and you can't, uh, you should probably see that there pretty good. Now, I would have actually created a thing when you were at 3D, but uh, it, 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 all the stuff sat in the room. really kind of put her in that big, uh, that big record for it. So, um, so example one, what do you think of example one? Oh, that's good. Yeah. You can see the into example one, and that is your graphic. That's one direction. Oh, yeah, so uh, are you actually in the European country? You're not there, you're just creating. So, CD into the second graphic, and you're going to be involved with Okay, so space space seven. So you can always tell this by LS and you'll see what the directory is. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, you have to be inside to get repository for it. And you can get in it. Does it go out in? Does the CD stack in? No, so from here you're actually in a get directory. If you uh, do something like uh, get status, uh, uh, you can uh, see that uh, it is a uh, get repo that you're in. Um, and you're up to date, so now you can create a file and you can connect it in. This way, yeah, that's because you're not going to get the hot degree. So, if you want it, uh, uh, if you have a little example, uh, it already exists. And so, you're going to have some good news. You have a little bit of news. You do have some good that's going to be home directory. Maybe you need a little bit of okay. Sorry, I'm going to leave you the puzzle on that one. You're going down into a directory, and how do you put it down into the directory? Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs>
Um, basically, the repository is a store for files and stores for your project uh, items. Uh, and so it's keeping something on a web server and sending the functions on your local desk. And so all of this is uh, a flex in it right now, but I'm just using the enterprise for keeping things on your local desk. And uh, that uh, is important to the server. It's a uh, new Netflix align to the uh, local company. Yeah, that would allow you to create a file that has this and other file contents. Uh, yeah. And then it yeah, so exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and this editor is more yes, you have to right now. Uh, it is kind of a worst editor in the world. Uh, so uh, uh, if you, uh, if there are a few uh, special commands. Uh, if you uh, uh, say, uh, you to add a So uh, uh, colon wq are your magic words to get out of that editor. The way you avoid ever getting into that editor uh, is by when you're saying get commit, uh, always say space minus m space uh, and then close and then your uh, get commit is matching all the changes to make the file by doing the get add uh, into a single commit message uh, and push them all at once. Uh, I guess it's all matching together. And then get push, push it back and up. And so if you're uh, modifying 20 files, then we won't grab the same commit with the message before you modify the files. Uh, I mean, I usually wait until I have enough changes to kind of a logical group of parking that I just didn't want to do anything. Now I go. Yeah, that's just so the echo command combined with the So if you say echo and then uh, in space and close the command, then that will compare the file and the file and the Uh, so, uh, an echo, uh, and then a quote, uh, and then the open current, uh, so uh, that guy, uh, the same way we type from the uh, other yeah. version. Yeah. And then try to get that many big stats, and that will tell you. Yeah, this, this is the magic, uh, you know, the colon that we see when uh, oh, you're in a certain way. Uh, so it's cool. Cool. And, cool. and it's the right. worst editor in the world, all the right? I'm going to pop here and then there. I still hear them. Yeah. Um, so you are going to look at the front of the screen. It shows that you change one file. This is perfect. So uh, now you just want to do this group of three commands. Uh, get add space period. And that adds all the files. Uh, and then uh, get Space minus zero. Now, 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 And then boom, it's up there. If you refresh your web page, you'll see it in the 
So when you first tried to get push, it wasn't authenticated. Only you can push to your every code because it's to our set. And so that's just ensure it's going to be okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, perfect. And you log in and uh, well, it says that uh, everything was up to date, so I'm not sure if you actually uh, had another file that uh, you can file in your directory. Uh, there, uh, there was a chance to be Uh, okay, yeah, so you always want to uh, yeah, do it again, give it a minus <laughs> test, and that's it. Yeah, and so quotation marks yeah. and then your message, uh, and that's basically just not test. Oh, so that's what you said. 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 Yeah, and, and then, yeah. Uh, so right now there's one level above or So you have the file created, uh, and uh, you uh, did it.
Okay, uh, I'm going to try and figure out the darn projector again, and then uh, let's uh, carry on. Okay, I know some of y'all are feeling fairly confused right now. Uh, it's uh, it's okay. Um, there is a big learning ramp to a lot of this stuff, uh, and uh, you'll get unconfused. Uh, uh, I really want you to uh, use the Slack channel to ask for help when you're confused on things, when you're trying to do this uh, yourselves. Uh, I uh, expect you'll probably have to look at this recording some as you go over some pieces of these uh, yourselves. Uh, uh, basically, uh, learning programming, getting started with uh, programming is a hard task. and. Uh, uh, you know, one of the most important things is just kind of get comfortable with discomfort. Uh, every time I learn a, a new language or a new library or uh, something new, I always go through this period of feeling like uh, I'm just not smart enough to get this thing. Uh, it's just not going to work. I'm not ever going to figure this shit out. Uh, um, and it always works uh, you, uh, if you just persist and uh, uh, yeah, keep struggling with the concepts. Uh, they will come. Uh, there's nothing magical about this. Uh, it's just a... Uh, logical system set up by a, a, a massive number of programmers that made this huge complex beast that we now call a computer. Uh, and uh, so uh, by slogging away at it and trying to logically figure it out and uh, remembering some commands and learning some commands, uh, it will actually eventually make sense. Uh, so uh, it, it don't give in to uh, a, a frustration too early. Uh, ask on the Slack channel when you need help. Uh, come back and watch the video again in places as you're trying to do these exercises. Uh, um, basically, this uh, class, like most uh, intro classes here at UVic, is structured such that uh, my expectation is that you're spending about two hours to three hours outside of class for every hour in class. That's kind of the uh, standard guideline we're given for uh, amount of effort that goes into a class. Uh, and so I'm expecting to leave you confused after uh, a bunch of these classes and expecting that you'll have to go through and do some work to get unconfused. Uh, my uh, role here is really to uh, uh, try and get you unconfused in person as easily as possible uh, and to help you on the Slack channel and other uh, paths as much as possible to help get you un unconfused. Uh, and uh, if you pick things up quickly, great. Uh, if you need more resources and more uh, uh, run-throughs on this stuff, that's fine too. Uh, uh, we'll get you to that, uh, that point through this. And all this stuff will seem really easy by the end of the course. Uh, so um, I want to talk just a little bit about JavaScript uh, and uh, specifically about JS Fiddle. Uh, and uh, we'll come back to some of the GitHub pieces uh, in a, a few minutes on the last exercise uh, with this. Uh, but uh, this week's homework, uh, again, uh, is uh, uh, to create a new project in GitHub. You've all done that. Uh, you've now added a readme uh, in GitHub. You've all cloned your computer and a directory set up for this class now. Uh, uh, yeah, so we're going to focus on this center section uh, of uh, create a short JavaScript program to add some numbers. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, basically what I want to show you are the set of commands that you'll use to assemble this, uh, yeah, this program. Uh, and then for your homework, we're going to be putting those pieces together and going through a lot of the examples we've, uh, we've done from today. Yeah. And hopefully doing them all yourself at, uh, at home is going to uh, uh, yeah, make it all kind of click and make sense why we're uh, doing these things. Uh, uh, because the, uh, yeah, the scarier one is this uh, project one uh, here. Uh, and uh, that's just got a little bit more complicated JavaScript uh, to write in there. And next week, uh, ASA and Andy will be going through in great detail how you do the uh, more complicated JavaScript. So let's start today uh, with uh, just a uh, little bit about uh, uh, JS Fiddle and what JavaScript is. Uh, basically, uh, JavaScript is a uh, programming language. And what I mean by programming language, uh, it's a, uh, a declarative language for telling the computer what to do. Uh, and uh, there are a bunch of different varieties of programming languages, from uh, functional languages to uh, object-oriented languages. Uh, and uh, it, it really doesn't matter what the difference is for writing some of these very basic programs. So, so the most basic program I can uh, show you is this one in the, uh, yeah, the fiddle. I mean, I guess I could do a more basic program. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, the place I want to start uh, is uh, what I had in this fiddle. Uh, and so I've got three concepts that I want to uh, yeah, describe here in this fairly simple program. Uh, the first is the concept of a variable. JavaScript uses a var keyword, uh, and that var keyword basically just says, whatever comes after the space after this var keyword, treat as a variable. Put some value into that uh, and uh, yeah, save it for later so that I can do something with it. JavaScript is a, uh, a, an untyped language. What I mean by that is that if this were something like C++ or uh, even Python uh, or Java rather than JavaScript, uh, I'd have to tell it what kind of a variable, a variable to expect. Uh, um, I'd have to say var string or var integer. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a strongly typed language. JavaScript is a weakly typed language, which means that when I uh, instantiate a variable using that var keyword in the name of the variable, uh, I can stuff anything into that variable. It can be an integer, it can be a floating point number, it can be a string, uh, it can be a memory location. Uh, anything I stuff in there uh, is uh, just going to exist in that variable just fine. If I want to use it later in the program, I can. Uh, so to simplify this program even more, uh, let's take out the prompt there uh, and uh, say that my uh, variable here uh, is uh, just going to uh, hold uh, the text 5. You always have to terminate your lines with a uh, semicolon. Uh, not always, always, but please always terminate your lines with a semicolon. It's an important uh, uh, thing to do. Uh, and in this one, uh, I only have one line, this alert showing the variable x, and it's going to show 5. Uh, if instead uh, I had uh, made that uh, the uh, 5 and run it, there we go. Embedded shell says 5. Uh, if I had uh, dropped out the quotes, it's not going to be the string five, but rather the number five. And I'm going to run it, and it says five again. But there's a difference. If that difference is that if I treat this as an integer, and I say five plus five and run that, it's going to say 10. If I say five, oops automatically added the second one. Five plus five, it's going to say 55. The reason be is that uh, when I have things enclosed by quotes, I'm treating those things as a string. And when I use a plus operator to add two strings, it's going to concatenate those strings. Basically slam them together and you've got uh, uh, one string made out of two substrings. Uh, and so uh, a string five plus string five is 55. Uh, if uh, yeah, this had been uh, string 5 plus space 5, of course, that would be 5 space 5. That anything that's held within quotes in JavaScript is treated as a string. Any number that is not within quotes is treated as a number. And so this is uh, yeah, basically uh, an example of a variable can hold absolutely anything. So programming is basically yeah, creating variables, uh, yeah, manipulating variables, uh, creating control structures, so things like loops uh, and uh, uh, yeah, getting input from the user. Uh, and we'll come up on all those more complex things uh, here uh, next class and in future classes. Uh, but uh, for this uh, initial homework uh, for tonight, uh, you're going to need to know how to get a uh, number in. And that was that prompt command that I, uh, yeah, that I had in here. 
So if I prompt uh, enter uh, a number, then that's going to prompt me to enter a number. Let me give it a nice long number. And then it's going to spit that number back out at me with the alert box. Now let me uh, do something else in here. Uh, let me say uh, x equals x plus 5. And let me uh, say my first number is 10. So x right now is 10. I hit enter. Oh, hey. What now? Uh, oh, it's treating it as a string that, uh, that first time. There we go. Uh, that's uh, a, a not quite what I had expected. Uh, I, I think we can probably uh, shortcut that. Uh, uh, let's see if we can. Yeah, we can. OK. So by uh, using the plus with a plus, uh, we're actually telling it to add the, uh, the value of that uh, to the uh, variable. And that casts it back to a, uh, to a number. Uh, um, but uh, that's kind of a shortcut that you might need to know on this. Yeah, sorry. Uh, alert X is what's causing that box to pop up. Uh, if this were not here, uh, then uh, the variables would change, uh, but uh, it wouldn't actually uh, do anything uh, uh, because we aren't uh, spitting any uh, value out. Um, if I uh, have the uh, alert here, uh, and let's instead of X just say uh, alert uh, hello, and I don't have the rest of my program here, then it's just going to throw up a text box that says hello. So alert is a function uh, that uh, just throws up a text box with the value that's inside that, uh, yeah, that function. Sorry, I've been trying not to use the words functions or methods because we'll introduce those next week. But yes, alert is a function. So basically, to do this week's homework from a programming perspective, uh, this is all you need. Uh, and it's good, because that's all the projector wanted to show you. Uh, um, uh, you need to uh, know the prompt command. Uh, you need to know how to add using the plus operator. Uh, and you need to know the alert function uh, to uh, spit something, uh, something back out. And uh, that's, that's basically uh, it for the programming side of, uh, of this. And then we're back to the uh, whole GitHub side. Uh, so it's just checking something up into uh, to GitHub. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, then that's the way that you'll submit your homework this week uh, is by sending me a uh, GitHub link. Um, I think this probably needs to run its fan for uh, about five minutes. Uh, and uh, yeah, then we can turn it on again. And I do want to spend uh, five minutes talking about the project, because uh, uh, in two weeks, we've got uh, project number one uh, uh, due. Uh, and uh, I think uh, what I'm going to do actually uh, is uh, rather than uh, uh, like the homeworks, which are due at the uh, start of class, uh, project number one is going to be due at the end of class. Uh, and we'll have a, a, a few minutes to work on it as a group here uh, before they uh, go in. So you'll have uh, a, a one more bit of question answering time with me uh, for this project uh, uh, before it's actually, uh, actually due. Um, not a whole lot of time. It's really just a time to answer quick questions. And we'll give 10 or 15 minutes to, uh, to wrap up your work on it. Uh, um, but uh, I don't want to have your project be due uh, with uh, guest instructor next week and not having a chance to see me again before, uh, before it's due. So uh, we'll have one more chance to talk about it uh, the uh, uh, 27th, but not to do any substantial work on it. I'd really like you to ask your questions and everything else on Slack and uh, make sure you come in with that project all done with possible exception of, uh, hey, help, I didn't get this bit. Uh, how do I get this done? And we'll spend no more than 10 or 15 minutes at the start of class on the 27th uh, before doing, uh, 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 making the projects due and then going on the lesson. Um, in the uh, couple of minutes until I get this projector back on again, uh, let's go ahead and have all of you pull up JS Fiddle uh, and start creating your first little JS Fiddle program. Uh, and uh, I'd like you to use those three elements, uh, the prompt box to get something in, uh, create a variable, uh, add something to that variable, uh, and then the alert box to uh, show uh, you know, what the results of that adding to the variable was. Looking some blank faces, but uh, I, I raise your hands when you need, when you need help with that. OK, I'll, I'll go back first. JS still like that. JS still not? Huh. 
Incidentally, that's a great rule for life, don't use Internet Explorer, um, but uh, uh, particularly here. Great. Okay, where to next? Yeah, exactly. Um, that's that's kind of the, uh, the the whole point of the homework is to be just not so much programming and all of the other programming that you're doing. Okay, um, I think most people are catching on to, uh, to this. Uh, before we lose the projector again, which I anticipate will happen within the next three minutes, uh, I'm going to jump back into slides for just a minute, talk about project one, uh, and uh, yeah, then uh, if it dies, it's okay. And uh, I'll run around and help anybody who wants help, but after uh, we talk about that, if you're caught up and uh, feel comfortable where we are for the homework, uh, feel free to, uh, to slip on out. Um, I'm going to not do the uh, GitHub pages piece tonight. Uh, that was something I wanted to uh, kind of get to if we uh, got through the other stuff easily and everybody was bored. Uh, GitHub pages are really cool. Uh, read that in the slides. Uh, here in a couple of weeks, I will have you creating web pages on GitHub pages, uh, but uh, there's no reason to clog tonight's lesson with that. Uh, uh, it wasn't forming part of the uh, project or the homework. 
Now, the project uh, that uh, was uh, going to do in here uh, was originally going to be a fair amount more complicated uh, than, uh, than this, uh, but uh, I got a, a bit concerned by the fact that I have a guest instructor in uh, next week, uh, and uh, I wasn't going to see you in between assigning a project and uh, then uh, having it due. Uh, and so I've scaled it back significantly. Uh, and really all I want to have uh, in this project uh, is a few more programming concepts than I gave you today. Uh, and uh, this is going to be turned in as an individual project. Uh, with anything in this class, and it's important to uh, talk about this because it's different than other computer science classes, uh, I really don't care if you work in groups on uh, individual projects or if you uh, create code from someplace on a website somewhere. Uh, all I really care about is that you tell me about it. Uh, and so when you're submitting a project or you're submitting an assignment in here, uh, if uh, you found a piece of brilliant code that uh, alphabetizes uh, a, a list of words and splits them up from an input field uh, uh, and uh, you put that in your, uh, your program, just put a comment uh, that says uh, you copied from this website. Uh, and that's just fine. The point of this class is not to be an algorithms development class. It's not to uh, be uh, producing brilliant code of your own necessarily. Uh, it's to get used to how the system works, to get used to how code works, uh, uh, to uh, yeah, just kind of get the basics going and understand how the pieces fit together. Uh, and so uh, if you did this in an upper level computer science course, uh, well, no, you wouldn't get away with it. Uh, it'd be just like copying a, uh, an essay uh, for your English assignment. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, it would be really frowned on. But in here, work together, uh, yeah, 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 crib things from websites, whatever resources you find to do these programming problems, go ahead and do it. Uh, uh, just as long as in comments you say what helped you the most. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, you know, attribution uh, is the only thing that really matters in here. What I'm asking you to do for uh, project one here uh, is to uh, take a comma separated list of words. So if in that uh, prompt box we just looked at, uh, I'd entered uh, a, a pizza, artichoke, uh, a, 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 a lamb chop. Uh, um, a, 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 I would want you to uh, then go ahead and split those up into individual words by the comma. And there are some JavaScript functions to do that. Uh, and uh, then alphabetize them. Uh, and there are some sorting functions to help you do that, uh, uh, putting them into alphabetical order, uh, and uh, then uh, spit them back out uh, in uh, a, a, an alert box uh, or uh, to a, a variable there. Uh, or do a web page if you get ambitious, but there's no need to uh, do any web programming for this first uh, project one. Uh, so it's okay to do this as a JS Fiddle program, uh, but I'll want you to take the uh, JavaScript code from that Fiddle uh, or the JavaScript in HTML if you decide to do it as an HTML page uh, and uh, check that into a GitHub repo and, uh, and turn that in. Uh, and the program should be able to accommodate anywhere between two and 12 uh, uh, words in that list. Uh, and the reason I put this in there is that uh, this will make you uh, actually have to use arrays for uh, holding that as compared to just uh, variable one, variable two, variable three, variable four. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I guess you can get away with it that way. There's only 12 of them, but please don't. Please learn how to use arrays. And so basically the uh, concepts that you should be asking uh, Andy and Faye about next week uh, or how do I split a list of words uh, that are comma separated? Uh, how do I uh, create a uh, set of arrays? How do I sort and alphabetize? Uh, I, and then the other things are from this week's homework. Uh, so I don't think there should be any magical mysteries here in this project one, uh, um, but uh, it is a uh, more significant programming assignment than, uh, than the homeworks are. Uh, and feel free to ask on Slack channels on, on, uh, on this. Uh, this is the last individual uh, project, by the way. Yeah, after this, we'll be doing some uh, some group projects, and some of the other two projects, and of course, will be significantly different. Uh, questions about project one? Okay, sounds kind of intimidating right now, I suspect. Uh, but uh, by next week, and uh, and on Slack, I suspect you can sort uh, a lot of the pieces there out, and uh, it's uh, uh, yeah, it, it'll seem easy by the end. Um, the homework uh, is, uh, I've gone through a couple times in here, uh, it's really the GitHub steps. Uh, and since all of the uh, GitHub steps are now in this recording, uh, uh, you should have a uh, pretty uh, good chance of being able to go through and add files and uh, uh, commit files and push files. And uh, then the programming piece of it is really just the three lines of code, uh, a, a couple of modifications to those three lines. Uh, uh, to uh, make it add uh, multiple numbers. Uh, so three numbers, adding them together, throwing up an alert box, and uh, you're all done with the, uh, the homework. Uh, what I want to see is uh, a GitHub repo turned in. Uh, 
And the other thing with the GitHub repos is that uh, it, this will particularly become important on the project uh, side. Uh, I'm not just looking for the repo to hold your final version. Uh, as soon as you're doing substantial coding, I want your repo to be showing commit messages that are reasonable steps towards that final solution uh, to show that you're using GitHub properly. Don't worry about it for the homework, uh, but uh, as you're doing the project, just remember to do your commits on a regular basis, and as you make changes and experiment with things, uh, uh, leave a good commit history showing that you've been experimenting with things. Anybody have questions? Okay, if you are lost and want help on any of these pieces, feel free to stay behind, otherwise feel free to run away. Okay. Uh, a variation of it. I want you to solve this problem and check it into a GitHub repo. Send me the repo. I want to get from 